Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If this is your uh, first time here, I surely appreciate you stopping in. If you're a long time uh, viewer or supporter of the channel, I surely appreciate you guys coming back. Uh, means means the world to me. What I'm, we're going to talk about today, guys, is this. We are going to talk about a um, piece of puzzle that's pretty strong that's coming you know, to the forefront here very shortly. We're talking about food plots. And today, guys, we're going to keep this one as short or sweet as I possibly can. But we're going to talk about how to keep a, a food plot secure and also what to plan in, in what food plots, right? I get a lot of questions this time of the year start arising. What should I plant? Where should I plant it? And my clients, questions them are already answered when we're designing the property. Um, I do get some of my clients reach out and ask, hey, you know, uh, can we change this? Can we change that? Can we try something new this year or add this, add that? And that's all fine too, right? That's how we all learn and, and uh, you know, build our strategies going in for the fall. But here's a video, guys, on what to plant, where to plant it, and why. So today's video, guys, we're going to talk on, we're going to touch on a couple topics here. One, where. So you always hear me preach this, and I preach this to all my all my clientele, whether you're a viewer here on the channel, and or a uh, client that I've uh, built, designed and built the property for. We always focus on where to plant these food plots first and foremost, not the size, right, guys? I'd rather see you not plant a food plot at all then plant it in the wrong spot, right? So um, with that being said, that comes with a lot of, you know, um, maybe knowledge and, and you know, um, getting to know the property. In my case, designing the property. Um, once we're there, boots on the ground, making sure that I can get you in and out of the property without getting busted. So that's the where part of it, right? Now, reason I'm, I've got you here on the back 40 plot today, or the no man's land plot today, I'm sorry, the back 40 is on the other ridge here. Uh, the no man's plot, plot is this because of the natural screening now you can see right there behind me guys I've got one of our box blinds that box blind just doesn't look at the food plot right this food plot is actually out the If you're when you're in that blind, it's out the right window. It's down, you know 60 80 feet uh, in elevation below it 125 yards from the, the blind two steps out the back door That's all uh, John comps HD screening in the fall T two steps out the back door the deer have no idea you're in the world but out the front of that, right in the front of it, I'm looking at a, a uh, intersection of trails right behind doe bedding. Uh, that's a saddle that you can see right there. That saddle goes right up over the transition that's built right here on the face. It goes right past all this doe bedding. So there's a lot of things going on from that stand, that uh, uh, box blind there, guys. And my bow stand is at the head of this draw up here, the good AM sit. A lot of things going on other than just looking at a food plot. So natural screening ties into that, right? Anytime you can put a food plot where there's natural screening, my access is over the back side of that ridge right there, guys. Um, 100 yards from where we're at right here, over the back side of that, I can walk in and out of this property all day long and, and they don't know I'm here. Now, this food plot, this uh, this one here, no man's the no man's land plot is, is a, um, just a little piece of the puzzle it's not very big it's just over a quarter acre uh, and it plays a huge uh, uh, portion or it, it has a big role let's say in the uh, success of the farm but it's not large volume so that's kind of the myth buster right it doesn't have to be big it's just got to be in the right spot second part of that is this guys what do we plant right what do we plant in our food plots so great question because it's got a bunch of you know things tied to that so when i design a property for my clients and what i recommend here on the, on the channel is this keep all of your food plots the same so them are your food plots right your your normal food plots that have your dough bedding associated with it you know whether you're uh, within that first hundred yard rim which whether they start right on the face of it or like this one because of our access to that blind is there and we are on this side of that so I'm actually hunting this on like a northerly wind and um, so they it's the food plot then about 30 feet then the dough bedding starts the reason for that is is the transition slides right through so the wind is good for us good for him so with that being said all your food plots are the same right what I do this year we've got a video coming here guys within the next couple of days that we're going to kind of 
uh, open up the hatch here on a new program that we're working with with uh, John Comp out of uh, uh, West Con or the end of uh, the western end of the Upper Peninsula, uh, Northwoods Whitetails. There, um, trying to build that perfect blend for our no-till system for this system that I recommend to you know how to plant right. So, so on today's video, what do we plant? I keep all of your food plots the same first and foremost. So this year's food plot pr program that we are, are tagging is it's the whitetail driven summer. So we'll go over in depth another video what that is, but it's a summer food source that has all of your height, your biomass, has some beans, does have some clover, but we're looking at all that biomass that we are putting here, building, soil building, if you will, going into to have a better fall crop and to tie summer food in with fall food and have a smorgasbord going forward. Where this varies is this. The only only spots that you do different are your shot plots. So I have two versions of a shot plot, right? If you follow the channel or if you're one of my clients, two versions of a shot plot. One is a shot plot that's tied right on the end of a food plot, right? So it's a shot plot screening then out into a food source, something you can get away away from. Gun blind like this, maybe you can see it. A bowl stand, if it's on, it has to be a shot plot. You have to be able to get away from it, or he might just as well be sitting on the food plot. The other part of that is, is my bullpen plots, right, that I speak of that are interior, that are buck and buck only, way away from uh, doe, doe bedding creations. Uh, we are focusing a one-stop shop, if you will, for the bucks, kind of a timber setting. Uh, so, with that being said, what do we plan in those, right? So, them are kept simple. Rye, clover, rye, clover, chicory something like that in those other plots. Your shot plots are only thing different than your, are, are different from your main food plots. The third leg of that is, like I have here on the farm, I have ag, right? So the ag is totally different, uh, planted soy or uh, corn, soybeans or corn, and it's not treated the same as your food plots or your shot plots because your food plots actually have dough bedding on them, your ag does not. So Huge piece of the, of the uh, puzzle there, guys, as far as your food plot program. So let that one kind of sink in this year uh, as far as what are we planting. Um, you know, you don't want just summer food. You don't want a bunch of perennials. And you don't want just a bunch of fall food. We want to, the older I get, guys, the more you, you follow the channel, the more that you'll see is the more that I focus on herd health, right? Something that I've really, really, um, you know, tried and tried to teach and learn myself grow as a manager myself i think there's a lot of tied into that and i've said this before guys i'll probably say it again a million times here on the channel i don't think we should be giving awards out steward of the year and anything around the country uh, no matter what association you belong to if you're just planting fall food plots to harvest deer over it, it to me it's it's uh it doesn't tie to the whole piece of the land steward let's leave it better than we we found it um to me there's so much more that goes into hunting right and being a conservationist than just planting a fall food plot just to shoot deer over. We're not, if you do that, most of your fall food plots, guys, aren't really helping the soil. You're actually taking from the soil. Now you can fix that and you can amend that, right, with chemical and you can, you can use, you know, uh, spray liquid fertilizers and you can, you know, put like I'm doing here, fertilizer and lime and you can amend them, but they're not building the soil um, the proper way. So that's why I do more focused on now is the summer side of the food is that you know trying to promote that biomass that green manure and really getting that you know that them uh, grains and sorghums and and uh, you know everything that's in our our summer blends that i recommend uh, john comp soil builder right same same theory, theory tied into our theory uh, now is is trying to help the soil conditions guys I really believe that the condition of your deer throughout the entire year begins with your soil. And if you don't amend that or you don't correct that in the summer, you're not, you're not going to be able to catch that. And it's a never ending battle trying to just plant fall plots. So that's why we plant the food plots, guys. That's why we, where we plant them, you know, natural seclusion. If you don't have natural uh, screening like it is here, make sure you're planting uh, John's HD screening and really, really tuck these plots in. You have to get past them. If you can't get past them, they're all for none. I, like I, I've said, guys, um, on you know multiple videos before, I'd rather have you have that food plot in the right spot 
and then we worry about how big we can make it. Just keep in mind guys, your food plot programs are all the same. That way one of your areas doesn't mature more than the other. Your shot plots are a different deal because you want them to stop there. That's where maybe one of your water tanks is at, water tank licking branch, something like that. They come in, one stop shop, they take a bite. Um, that you know, rye is there to kind of nurse, or that chicory there is kind of to nurse that uh, clover. Uh, one bite, two bites, take a drink, hit the licking branch, and they're gone. That way, you can get in and out of that location, um, you know, time and time again if you have to, and you're not blowing those food sources off. That is the only spot that you don't plant the same uh, in your in your planning or in your food plot strategies uh, going into this year, guys. So. This next video coming down here, guys, looking forward to this one. We are going to kind of tell you what to plant in there, what it holds for you on your food plot, food plot programs, and how to build the best food plot tonnage that I can possibly uh, teach and promote that, uh, that success on a food plot, guys. It's all kind of starts right here where we're at, you know, making sure it's in the right spot and, um, and then making sure that you're not, you know, planting each food plot's different. You think you're giving more of a smorgasbord. What you're doing is you're throwing a whole bunch of mixed signals and you're spreading deer in the wrong places at the wrong time. Remember, all your food plots are the same except for your shot plots. Thanks, guys.